Hey everyone, Roman Prokopchuk here. Ukraine war update September 11th, 2022. Ukrainian forces continue to make strides and take territory in the Kharkiv Oblast. They've made it past Vovchansk, which is really close to the Russian border. They say they're probably like 15, 20 kilometers currently from the Russian border, but obviously that's ever changing. Vovchansk is over here, right almost smack dab on the Russian border. There's only a small pocket of uh, Russians within the border of Ukraine, north of Kharkiv, where you see several areas really north and uh, northwest uh, that have been uh, liberated as well. So obviously that's uh, ongoing and and that's progressing nicely. Uh, Russian forces around Izum are likely increasingly isolated, obviously due to uh, all the supply lines being cut and the, the rapid pace of the Ukrainian advance. The Ukrainian military is also on the outskirts of Lushchansk. Ukrainian operations also continue in the Kherson Oblast. If you claim several settlements there as well, the Russian defensive front is under pressure on its northern and southern flanks. Obviously, they've been under pressure and playing defense for the past uh, week to two weeks uh, rather than advancing or their so-called uh, advances that really didn't do much in the last few months. Ukrainian Air Force destroys enemy air defense systems using harm missiles. The 237th Guards Airborne Assault Regiment of the Russian Federation ceased to exist because everyone was either dead or injured, which is pretty crazy. There wasn't even one person within that regiment that wasn't killed or injured and not able to fight, which is pretty crazy. Russia finally comments on the Ukrainian liberation of places in the Kharkiv Oblast. Police document Russian war crimes in the liberated territories of the Kharkiv Oblast, which obviously now things have to be documented since uh, that area has been under Russian control for several months. So obviously there's most likely atrocities, like uh, hopefully not like in Bucha and Irpin or on Kiev, but there's been bodies found. There's been abuses already documented. So that's not something that's going to be not necessarily shocking, but not surprising. So the, the Iranian drones that uh, Russia acquired from obviously Iran to use in, uh, in, in Ukraine, ironically are malfunctioning in battle, which is, is like everything coming out in terms of how the Russian Federation military is performing within Ukraine. So let's see what they get from North Korea and how that uh, that performs in the field as well. The uh, U.S. accuses Moscow of forcibly deporting up to 1.6 million Ukrainians, which is crazy. They've uh, created several filtration camps all over Russia, not only on the other side of the border. They've traveled and basically took Ukrainians, Ukrainian children, Ukrainian orphans, they've emptied out orphanages, they've done stuff like that. They've taken people straight from uh, areas against their will where they wanted to move towards, uh, you know, free areas of Ukraine and towards the West. They basically bust them into Russia. All the uh, civilians and citizens in the Mariupol area where that was besieged, they basically took them all to filtration camps. Some of them are like straight Soviet style uh, labor camps, but this is all over Russia. There's like the other side of Russia. They've taken some of these Ukrainians. So 1.6 million Ukrainians have been taken into Russia. And, um, you know, not a lot of people are speaking about it, which is crazy. Germany plans to send 16 bridge laying tanks, BIBER, 10 anti-aircraft guns, Jepard to Ukraine, uh, a course for long-term support of Ukraine set at Reinstein 5. Obviously, there's been agreements and concessions. Russia has been uh, an influence on Germany based on them getting a lot of the, the fuel. And winter is coming. Obviously, it gets cold 
not as cold as in Ukraine and Belarus and other areas in terms of Germany, but they're heavily energy dependent on Russia. And now Russia obviously cut off the pipeline to Europe and they're kind of scrambling. So they're kind of holding them hostage in a way. So the concessions and promises that Germany's made to send lethal aid, some of which they've sent, but a lot of them they've backed out on or they've had objections in terms of military aircraft by other countries and things of that nature is being sent. So hopefully they provide what they said they're going to provide on time and aren't, uh, you know, dissuaded by the energy situation. But those are kind of the things that are being go that are going on today. Uh, September 11th, obviously, the uh, the battlefield within the Kharkiv Oblast and other parts of Ukraine is changing rapidly, sometimes hour by hour. So I'll try my best when something comes out to verify it first, obviously, through usually through Russian sources. If Russian sources are admitting to something happening that Ukraine did, then, you know, everybody is in concession just obviously sorting the facts after that. So if Russia agrees, what information is coming out of like the military spokespeople of the Russian Federation in terms of, you know, the armed forces, if if military bloggers and news in Russia are reporting it, Ukraine news, correspondents on the ground traveling with the military or right behind the military as they liberate an area, they'll go in and obviously do interviews and things of that nature and uh western media as well telegram social media channels social listening in terms of platforms so verifying chatter and uh, geolocating certain photos and videos coming out in terms of different liberated areas and after which then it's reported and you know hopefully i i provide uh, my take as being a first generation immigrant and having family within Ukraine, having three family members in the military of Ukraine and being in contact with them as, as rare as it is because they can't say much, but, uh, it's nice to hear that, you know, they're safe and, you know, they're, they're conducting military operations and fighting for their nation. So I appreciate everybody listening and supporting. Slava Ukraini, Heroyam Slava, Slava Nazi, God bless.